Alright, hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be tearing apart this uh, old school turn and bank indicator. Uh, this is one of the oldie goodie styles. Um, we're talking basically World War II type stuff. Um, the newer Cessna types, of course, have got the little airplane thingy in there. We'll probably tear apart that apart one of these days when they require run. But for today, we got a nice old school one right here. Um, again, we're um, this is basically to show people on the inside how it works. We're just going to tear this apart and uh, see if we can make it work at least and um, you know, show you it's like on the inside and now that we have a good gauge acquired we can model this in our real some cockpits one day. So there's your Cessna aircraft part number made by the RC Allen, whoa focus, made by the RC Allen Business Machine Incorporated in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And of course, this is electric instead of vacuum operated for redundancy in case we lost uh, the engines or whatnot, or vacuum gauges become their source becomes plugged. We still have an electric gyro to help us with our turns and to show if we're turning or not. I don't know why they uh, were selling this because it's slightly off. It doesn't from straight up and down is slightly off, so that's might be why. Again, I got it cheap on eBay, but that's maybe why they sold it is because um, needs to be re braided. Um, this is the your gyro, electronic gyro, I should say. Looks like this is our ground strap. And our positive volts come over here. Again, the electricity comes in through here. Gets mounted up to this guy. And that, uh, there's your negative and your positive. We'll spin this up in a minute to see if it works. Now, obviously, with this gyro, it's not like a traditional gyro where you have both axes up, down, left, and right, or whatever. Um, this one's actually locked in, so it can only twist and turn one way. There's your twisting and turning when it's actually active. So when it's spinning, the gyro actually stays put, and you are actually rocking the airplane like that, right? Before we spin it up, we'll take the faceplate off, and I'll show you the little intricacy details of how this actually works on the, uh, I want to call it the head unit, gauge faceplate. I'm sure it goes by many names. We've only got one screw left in here, so we'll just take this off right quick. Okay. So this is the actual gauge plate. This is our bubble, right? So if you know if you're, that's your yaw, so if you're slipping or skinning, of course. Um, I I have seen people model this. But they make it into a very round ball. I don't like that. This is actually how it's supposed to be. The ball is it appears to be more of an oval shape. And the tube is a lot larger. I really like this style. Um, a lot better, honestly. And then um, in the back, this is just our needle. Okay, so we, when we twist that, that is our left and right indicator. It's actually pretty stupid simple. <laughs> this won't be too hard to recreate. This 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 is a fairly easy gauge. In right. between these two pieces of metal that come up right to here for the gauge, this goes right in the center of it, okay? And this is actually our hooked up to our actual gyro. Like this. And they have a I guess you call it a dampener in here. A um, little resistance, so it's nice and smooth action. Probably so the needle doesn't bounce around so much. There's a little bit of resistance in here. You just basically got a piston in the sleeve, basically. So it dampens it, so it's nice and smooth. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and spin this up and see if it uh, actually uh, still works. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hook this thing up to power and see what we got. All I got here is a 12-volt uh, DC uh comes from 120 volts AC and converts into 12 volts DC just like a car. I'm just too lazy to hook this thing up to my battery. <laughs> so, hook that one up there. Part of my crude alligator clips is the only way I can keep this uh, on without touching it. Okay. So gyro's now active. Sounds a little bit on the dry side, I'm not gonna lie to you folks. <laughs> Now with the gyro spinning, we can do our turns. Go up right turn, and then left turn. Just like that. 
And of course the ball will be your yaw axis if you're slipping or skidding. That's pretty much how it is. It's actually a pretty, not overly complicated piece of equipment. You can see it, the needle is in there. And there it is, one DC electric backup gyro turn indicator. Perhaps why they got rid of this one's because it's not self-centering. It's not the. Uh, it needs to be calibrated. <laughs> Lots of fun. It's really cool to have a working one here, some operation. Okay, back to the studio. Well, that was pretty fun, and it was nice to know it kind of still works. And if we move their faceplate, here is the. Uh, what I basically will do is I'll probably try to put this on the flatbed and just simply scan this in for the decals minus the Cessna part because I don't think I'll ever be building a Cessna cockpit. I'll still, I'm going to be sticking with the older school and bigger stuff. But um, very good quality for definitely scanning in. So um, we may do that. We may not. It all depends. But um, if you look really closely, if I can do this here, right there it says RC Allen Instruments. It's blacked out. But, let's see if I can focus it. There it is. RC Allen Instruments, right there. Sweet. Very nice piece. Very nice piece to model our planes after, for sure. It's a fairly simple instrument, but it's also very critical, especially when your uh, attitude indicator goes bonkers. You can still tell if you're turning left and right, as well as the condition of your turn, if you're using your rudder pedals or not. <laughs> I know when I was uh, first getting uh, my, my student pilot's license, when I was starting to work on it, it's like, man, my instructor says, you drive flat foot. And he told me, you need to start looking at the ball and start stepping on the ball with the rudder pedals. Like, well, in my simulator, I didn't have rudder pedals at the time, so I was definitely a flat foot flyer. <laughs> but anyways, there is um, there's a nice simple uh, gauge, very clean gauge that we can model our future builds after. Excellent. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.